Is the mic on? This discussion was taken straight from the DefCast. It's a podcast hosted by me and my deaf friend. You should definitely go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. I apologize for the audio. We had too many people and not enough mics. If you like this discussion, let me know and I'll be sure to do more. So, uh, yeah. I like the story a lot more in this one. It focuses a little less on jump scares. The jump scares didn't really do anything for me. Yeah. But I felt more invested in the characters in this one. For sure. I felt like they could have done a little bit more with the guy that was actually getting possessed. Mm -hmm. They focus a lot on Ed and Lorraine Warren, which I get because they bring a lot of appeal to those movies. He was a really good character from the very beginning. Like, he was very selfless. So I felt really bad for him throughout the movie. So I kind of want to see more scenes of him. I wanted to see the murder. The murder? Yeah. Low key, I'm surprised they didn't do that. Low key, yeah. I kind of wanted to see that happen yeah, because that yeah. would have added a much bigger impact to that. If you saw his perspective and then you saw the girl's perspective yeah. of like how she saw the murder happen. Yeah. Not gonna lie. But I like the investigative side of this movie. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would have to say one thing that I really didn't care for was during the exorcism of David with the little kid. Yeah, David. Yeah. Blatt. I thought at some point it was a little too like corny. Yeah. It was a little corny and it was maybe just a little too soon, but I do like the fact that they throw you right into the middle of yeah. someone else's possession. Yeah. And, and how it, it kind of makes you together. think it's going to like yeah, it kind of makes you think it's going to be all about the kid throughout the movie because it's always the kid in like exorcist movies. Yeah. Yeah, cuz normally I mean kids is like a really good like typical horror niche where yeah. they're, they're creepy on their own. Like I actually, I enjoyed the story more than the horror element because yeah. some of the scary moments were just were not scary. Like this movie to me yeah. is not scary at all. It's not. I but think... I mean we're also desensitized. Yeah. We're very, very desensitized. <sighs> Maybe if I saw it five years ago, I'd like it a lot more. Like I was really creeped out when I saw Conjuring 2, but you know, watching it again five years later, I'm like, oh, I mean, it's also something I've seen before, but yeah. Still, just seeing Conjuring Three, it's nothing. It's nothing new. I think it's just new in terms of the story. Seeing how like they're trying to prove that somebody was possessed rather than just trying to get like a demon out of somebody. Yeah, I, that, I thought that was really cool. Because then you get into more of like the detective side of things. That does put a spin on it. Cause normally you just you normally just witness like somebody getting possessed and then the exorcism. Yeah. And then they're not really dealing with, I mean, yeah, they're trying to get the demon out of him, but it's mainly just a way to like prove his innocence that he didn't kill anybody. And then for it to be like a very major case that was well known throughout the, throughout the country and like set precedents from then on of what happens in a courtroom in case somebody does claim demonic possession as a reason why they kill somebody. I thought it was very, very interesting. Cause I mean, like, what do you say? Like, let's say you're a judge and then somebody comes in and is like, okay, I plead innocence. Why? Demonic possession. Like, what do you do? You know what I mean? Do you say, okay, we'll take it to trial and prove that, you know, it was a demonic possession or you say, nah, but that's bullshit. You're just crazy. And then nah, it's bro, that's bullshit. Different. You're just crazy. I do, I do wish we got a little bit more of the trial because I, yeah. I, I wanted to see, all right, how are they going to prove this? But it's like, you get a glimpse of, okay, they're in, you know, they're in the, the hearing is going on. They're like, all right, plead innocent because, you know, reason of demonic possession. And then by the time, like the credits roll spoilers, it's like, all right, he's guilty. <laughs> so yeah. like, I don't, I guess they didn't prove there's, it. There's one scene I really loved. It was whenever they were trying to convince that lawyer to, yeah. Uh, help Arnie yeah and, they, and it's like they're like all right just come to our house you can yeah. meet like all the artifacts that we have yeah. she's like okay and, and then, then it cuts to them in a the court and she's like fuck I'm yeah. really I, about to do this <laughs> I, I feel like other than the opening sequence this movie as far as the true story goes has a lot more credence because they actually has like the ball. So at the end of the movie, it's like, all right, he was convicted for manslaughter and was like in jail for five years, which is how it happened in real life. Because Ed and Lorraine used to have this show called Secrets of the Supernatural, with the real life characters, and they would go through their cases. So in real life, yeah, Arnie Johnson went to prison for five years. In the first two Conjuring movies, Ed and Lorraine Warren saved the families, but that's not how it happened in real life. In the first one, the Perrin family kick Ed and Lorraine out because Roger Perrin punches Ed in the face when Ed tries to conduct a seance to save Carolyn Perrin. 
And in the second movie, they're not even involved in the infield poltergeist haunting. They're only investigating for a day, but they're the heroes of that movie. So this one, I thought it was cool that not only do we have Ed and, Lor and Lorraine Warren in the mix, but it's also the conclusion is how it actually concluded in real life. And James Wan has a very flashy directing style. This one has its own, I guess, distinctive flair. It's a lot more subtle, so it seems a bit, a bit more realistic, right? With something like rituals and things like that. People do that. There is probably nobody like Ed London that was 14, had eyes turning yellow, you know, levitating above her bed. That probably didn't actually happen. There was no they, nun named Valley running around. Yeah, I mean, they really shouldn't say based on true They gotta stop. They, they gotta stop doing that. It's it's such bullshit. That, I, it, there's some of the things that you see in these movies just get really, not comedic, it's just a little, like you said, too flashy. Like, there's a point where you see a dead body that looks like Hagrid running around. It's like naked and jiggling. It didn't That's say much. It didn't I don't say, think that happened. I think the jiggle was a nice touch, though. You thought the jiggle was a nice touch? They should have had that in 3D. It should have been in 3D. Yeah. I think instead of starting a film that says based on a true story, it should be inspired on real life mm -hmm. events. I mean, of course, Ed and Lorraine Warren are real, and... Yeah, yeah. I think they should make something, it not should, a documentary, but something that's a little more grounded. I think that would be really interesting. If they did something more hereditary style, but based it off of Ed and Lorraine Warren, that's that has a lot of potential. But I think a lot of people also like seeing the fun horror movies. I thought this movie was fun and very interesting. I kind of wanted to see an anime battle at the end between Lorraine and the chick that she was going Mystic against. Bitch. We'll Mystic, Mystic Bitch. Mystic Bitch, yeah. I don't know her name, so yeah, we'll call her Mystic Bitch. I would have liked to have seen an anime fight, but that's just... That's just you. That's just me making fun of like the whole rivalry between them. Yeah. But I thought it was also kind of cool. I thought that was an interesting concept to introduce, to have someone that was like the polar opposite of... Lorraine, you know, like where she can do all the same things, but in an evil way. I thought that was interesting. It kind of gets into yeah. like superhero mode when you start doing stuff like that. But yeah. yeah, comparing it to the other Conjuring movies, I'd still say two takes the lead out of like when it comes to being super creepy and having really good cinematography. Yes, two really takes the lead. But one three. also has that good James Wan style, and it's creepier. But like I said, th this one like Conjuring three. The story was really well written. I think James Wan is actually, I believe he wrote the story to it. Which, I mean, I know it's based off a true story, but they kind of put their own twist on it. And I think he probably got to focus a little bit more on writing. And I'm sure James Wan wanted to give somebody else a chance to direct, so. But, I just, it's, it's really, like I said, it's really difficult to compare this to the first two movies because this yeah. is its own thing. And I wouldn't mind seeing more or movies like this where it's just a really good story like where it goes into like a detective style so what i like is how it doesn't tie to anything else no like you can watch any of the conjuring movies in any order and well I, I wouldn't say that i think the uh, first i would i would say so because i mean okay yeah the first one introduces ed and lorraine warren but no i don't like, really need to know everything about them no, what I mean is, in the second movie, we saw The Nun, which led up to The Nun, the movie. No, I'm talking about just the three contracts. Oh, yes. Fuck The Nun movie. No, no, no. The movie's no. dog shit. But, no, but that's what I was saying. How The Devil Made Me Do It didn't leave, like, curiosity for anything else. Like, there's not going to be another movie that comes from The Devil Made Me Do It. How The Nun came uh, from The Conjuring 2. This is Warner Brothers or how, we're talking about. Yeah, yeah or how, but how Anna, Annabelle came from The Conjuring 1. Yeah. Like, there, when it comes to the uh, the devil made me do it, there's really nothing there. But, uh, <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, I like how it doesn't, like, leave an opening for another film to, for them to make another film to profit off of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, they they could try to, but it didn't really feel like they're setting something There's no like loose end there. It A completed story. It came, everything came to an end. They bound who was doing it. They stopped them. They, end, they got the trial, he didn't get killed, they ended up getting off for five years, and that was it. There's nothing else that can kind of happen afterwards. I agree, but DC Comics actually came out already with a, like a prequel to that witch woman, for whatever reason. 
They're gonna do that? They did it already, yeah. They came out with one. It's called, like, The Conjuring, The Lover, or something. I'll look it up real quick. So it's like, maybe they're trying to, like, establish some lore for that character. No, because it's all about money, right? Like, yeah. you definitely don't need another... She had that fatality yeah. finish at the end, though. Yeah, man, she, she did have a fatality. I thought it was really funny. At the end of the movie, Ed Lorraine Warner, like, well, you made a deal with the devil. And then she just gets fucking murked. And they just watch it happen. Like, you think that, like, these two Christian priests no, will just Lorraine do something. Away, but they was were... like, I'm going to save you this. Oh, yeah, yeah he, he was, he was like, possessed. Right. She's like, yeah, bitch, take him. Yeah. Take him. But, all right, so that's it for Conjuring? So, what, was, what were your reviews again? Noah, what's your... I give it an 8 out of 10. Jordan? Jordan? Uh, so go with an 8. 8 out of 10? Mm-hmm. Adam? I think a 7. 7? Okay. I give it extra, one extra points. I'd, Just because of that I still, finish. After talking about it some more, I think I'd still give it a 7. So I gave it like a 6.5 at the theater, but I've thought about it more. So, so average, good, average, average is like 7.5? Yeah. yeah. About that. I just think they made some really good, like, strong, bold choices.